Remember that one time in 2020 when all the schools shut down and everyone became a homeschooler? But, uh, Blue, I didn't become a homeschooler. Yes, you did. Everybody did. And a lot of people still are. If you're watching this video at around the time it came out, there's a reasonable chance you are currently in a working from home situation. So I thought, what better time to talk about being a homeschooler? Because guess what? I was a homeschooler all the way from preschool to 12th grade. And now I'm even a homeschooled college student because college is closed and I'm online. So get this. When I was a kid, being homeschooled, I didn't have to wake up at the crack of dawn. I got to sleep in. It was awesome. Guess what else? I got to do school in my PJs. How great is that? So great. But the best part about being homeschooled is it was super easy for me to graduate top of my class because I was the only one. The tricky thing with talking about my homeschooling experience is that it's different for everybody, so I'm sure my homies out there are going to disagree with some of what I have to say. I'm sure some homeschoolers do have to get up at the crack of dawn and don't get to wear their PJs. We live in a broken world, my friends. So I'm just going to focus on my experiences. This isn't how it is for everyone, just me. I stuck to the same basic routine for most of my life. I would wake up around 9, brush teeth, take a shower, eat breakfast, normal, usual stuff. Then, when it was time for me to start my schoolwork, I would reach for this green folder. Now, this green folder contained all the work I had to do in any given school week. At the beginning of the year, my mom would tear out all the homework sheets from the various workbooks and divide them across the school year into these 36 or so folders. My mom color-coded the folders for each of my siblings. I was green, my younger sister was purple, I think, my older sister was was red and my older brother was blue. I would later go on to steal his identity and become YouTube famous with it. Sorry, bro. These folders would have a handful of math sheets, English and grammar sheets, science activities, etc. The best part about it is I got to decide how much to do each day as long as I got it all done by the end of the week. I could do it all on Monday and have total freedom for the whole week and I never did that once. I'm also misleading a little bit because my mom did have a set amount she wanted us to do each day and she would check to make sure we did it all. But the thing is, I was the third kid. My mom was so busy helping and managing the other siblings and living her life that she would pretty much be like, did you do your work? And I'd say, yes. And she would trust me for some reason. She would check at the end of the week, but she generally wouldn't visually check my work every day, which made it really easy to put off work until the end of the week, which I did a lot. I didn't just have worksheets. I also had a lot of books I was supposed to read. I would read the first page of a chapter or the first and last sentence of each paragraph or basically the minimum amount to get my mom to believe I understood the book. I probably missed out on a lot of knowledge, but it made me really good at scanning for the important details and ignoring the rest. I used this skill all the time. There there were also quite a few books my mom would read out loud to me because they were above my reading level and my mom thought it was a good idea for me to know this stuff and I did not pay attention most of the time. We would read for like 30 minutes, but it was a long 30 minutes because I did not have a good attitude about it. Let's pause here. My mom invested time in me and read me books. That is good job, mom. Good mom. Sorry, I didn't pay more attention. Now you might be wondering, hey, Blue, how are you so socially well-adjusted? Aren't homeschoolers supposed to be super awkward? Well, sometimes homeschoolers do end up super awkward. That didn't happen to me because my mom actually got me out of the house pretty regularly. I was involved in all kinds of sports and activities, but my main source of social interaction was from a homeschool co-op. This was a place where every Monday, homeschoolers from far and wide would gather and take classes taught by actual teachers. Most of these teachers were also homeschool moms and sometimes dads, but they were moms and dads with qualifications. Smart moms and dads. Wanna know a recipe for disaster? Depriving kids from social interaction for a full week and letting them all gather up and expecting them to be quiet and do their classes and homework and not go crazy. I was an especially obnoxious, loud kid who really liked attention and I got yelled at a lot for being too crazy. Eventually I mellowed out, but man oh man I did a lot of cringy stuff. One time in a science class we were all waiting for the teacher to get there and I was talking to a friend. I don't remember what we were talking about, but I know it was a disagreement and I ended up being right. Seeing as we were unsupervised, I decided to stand up on the table and start dancing, saying stuff like, ha ha, in your face. 
right as the teacher walked in, and shamo shablamo, I got yelled at in front of everyone, and I totally deserved it. Another time, I played Wilbur in a middle school production of Charlotte's Web and had to wear what was essentially the bunny pajamas from A Christmas Story, and that was really embarrassing. One of the worst things about the co-op was if there was a window of time when we didn't have a class, we were supposed to go to study hall. A no-talking-allowed room where we could work on schoolwork. Yeah, I haven't seen my only friends in a week. You expect us not to talk? Yes, they did, and I got yelled at a lot for talking in study hall. I had a lot of good experiences, too. I would volunteer to help set up and tear down classrooms. I had a lot of friends, and when we were allowed to talk, like at lunch and between classes, we talked and talked. It was great. This co-op is where I met Red and got into cubing. So great. There were pretty much no bullies or fighting. We were all pretty much like, we only get to come here once a week. We have to make this work. And it was overall a very valuable experience. Now, I know doing school from home has been a pretty big adjustment for a lot of people. So here's a few tips and tricks to make everything a bit easier. Disclaimer, these tips are not going to work for everyone. Everyone's in a crazy different situation. So if it doesn't work for you, I'm sorry. It's not my fault. I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life. Just watch the video. Number one, have a school spot. I've discovered I cannot get work done at my desk. I get distracted too easy. I have to use my laptop on the couch. I would go to a coffee shop or something, but... <coughs> Number two, don't wait till the last minute. Even if an assignment isn't due for a few days, if it's at the back of your mind and you don't have anything else to do, do the assignment. Keep a clean, stress-free plate if possible. Trust me, I'm a YouTuber, it helps. Number three, sleep as much as you can, like eight hours a night. It's good for your body, good for your brain. I could make a whole video on sleep. I love sleeping. I think it's super important, and I think everyone should do it more. It'll help you be less grumpy. Number four, stay connected to your friends. Talk to them, text them, call them, whatever it takes. Don't disappear. Loneliness is tough. It makes everything more difficult. And if you're in a lonely place, it's not your fault. This has been a big, tough, isolating year. It's okay to feel lonely. I just don't want anyone to feel powerless against their loneliness. You are capable of moving away from it by reaching out, initiating connection. It might not always work, but it's better than waiting to feel less lonely. Whoa, getting into the deep end. Number five, have fun. Do the stuff you actually like. You are a human, not a productivity machine. It's okay to not be doing school all the time. You shouldn't feel guilty when you aren't working. Do you have a hobby? Do that hobby. If you don't have a hobby, you should try cubing. Cubing is great. I have hundreds of videos about it. You should check those out. Even though this whole working from home situation is pretty comfortable and familiar for me, I know it's not that way for everybody. The shift to online learning is not an easy one. This definitely isn't what I thought college would be like. I have no idea how much longer we're all going to be homeschoolers. What I do know is that having a good attitude goes a long way. I know that sounds cheesy, but it's true. Don't worry. Be happy. I was homeschooled, and I liked it. Okay, bye.